Hey guys, welcome back to the course. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about your subcontracting strategy. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's the best path for you. So if you're already taking this course, you are either a programmer who's interested in growing your skills, growing your efforts and taking your work to the next level, or you're a non programmer, and you're probably looking at this like it's a business you think you could do really well in. Now, why do I introduce it like that? There's only two buckets that you can fall into. Well, because in both cases, you're going to need some type of subcontracting strategy. Now, if you're a programmer, you can't really clone yourself. And the whole idea behind turning this into a business is that you're going to take larger projects or more projects. And if you're a non-programmer, well, this is pretty obvious. You can't make the website yourself, so you're going to have to find someone who can. Now, if you're someone who's coming at this from the angle of I'm a freelancer and I just want to learn techniques to grow my established business, that's perfectly fine too. You don't necessarily need a subcontracting strategy, but it is extremely helpful to understand how you're going to go about it and to have basic skills in subcontracting. So if anything comes up, you still know how to find help. So before you start your journey of putting together a killer team um, and finally signing your first multi-million dollar contract, you need to sit down and have a little bit of a think about what your subcontracting strategy is going to be. So let me give you a little bit of uh, transparency about how freelancers and contractors are typically divided up. Now, it's really helpful before you go and look for a subcontractor to know what you're going to expect and to know exactly what you're looking for. Now, first off, you're going to need to make a decision about price and language. Now, the reason why I say those together is because they're almost always related to each other. There are some exceptions, of course. Now, some contractors, they're going to be from countries you've never heard of. And some contractors, they're going to be from probably down the street. There's a big gap when we're talking about distance. Now, at the same time, some of them will be able to effectively communicate and communicate fluidly and other ones are going to sound probably like drunk robots. Really hard to understand. Sometimes they speak like, do you remember Mac speak? That old pro software program you would use in elementary school. Now, a contractor with bad communication skills and an inconvenient time zone, they're probably going to be a lot cheaper. Now, obviously, there's exceptions to this. There are still expensive areas that have terrible language skills and terrible time zones, but this is just a generalization. Now, a fluent English speaker who lives in the same exact time zone as you, almost sometimes the same city, they're obviously gonna be a lot more expensive. Now, how this relates to your business is that each type of contractor can dramatically change the dynamic of how you deliver projects, how you pitch your projects, and how you find clients. Now, an expensive articulate contractor, they're probably going to deliver much higher quality of work, but they're also gonna be considerably more expensive. Now, that for you means that you're gonna to have to push higher prices to your clients. And because your rates are higher, now all of a sudden your clients are going to expect a considerably higher standard of project quality. So in a lot of cases, it can actually cancel itself out. You charge more, but at the same time, your clients ask for a lot more. <laughs> Thank you.